Uh, we always knew that this was uh, going to be a long process. We knew there were issues, uh, for example, around autos uh, that was much more, uh, the conversations were much more important between Mexico and the United States. Uh, indeed, in their conversations, uh, they were actually working off a proposal put forward uh, by Canada in June to try and bridge some of the gaps uh, between the positions on auto. There is, in any trilateral deal, there are always opportunities and moments where there are bilateral discussions. Uh, but at the same time, Canada was uh, connected to the discussions ongoing uh, with Mexico. We're pleased with the progress made on, uh, on autos in particular with Mexico. And now uh, our uh, negotiators are heading back to Washington tomorrow uh, to engage in a constructive and collaborative way and uh, seeing if there's a deal for all of us there. Uh, as I've said, uh, we need to see a win-win-win for all three countries, uh, but Canada will not be signing a deal unless it is in the interests of uh, Canadian workers, uh, Canadian middle class, uh, Canadians in general. And if I could just follow up, uh, I understand your win-win-win, but do you accept that Canada will have to make concessions in order to get a deal? And if so, where would you make those concessions? Well, as, as you know, I'm not going to negotiate in public. We've been very clear that there are a number of things uh, that we uh, absolutely must see uh, in uh, a uh, renegotiated NAFTA. There are lots of things we can make improvements on. It's a 25-year-old deal that was struck before the internet, for example. So uh, there's opportunities to upgrade, and that's part of the natural give and take uh, at the negotiating table. But as I've said all along, uh, our government will stand up for Canadian interests. We will make sure that it's the right deal for Canada. And as I've said, no NAFTA is better than a bad NAFTA deal for Canadians, uh, and that's what we're going to stay with.